Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma Talk is given by Daniel Hung Shui Sharpenberg. Hello, everyone. I wanted to talk about the subject of community today. And I'll start with a story, and maybe you've heard this story before, and probably you've heard it before, but maybe you haven't, and it's the story of the Buddha. And the story is that one day, the Buddha's assistant, who was also his cousin, his name was Ananda, he went to the Buddha and he said, I've been thinking, and I think that practicing in community or Sangha is half of the spiritual life. And the Buddha paused for a minute, and then he said, no, Ananda, practicing in the community is all of spiritual life. And I really like that story because I think it, it tells us a lot about what is important. That is, following the spiritual teachings is important. Um, refraining from indulging in our base desires all the time is important, right? But also... Coming together in community is important, too. And I used to uh, sort of have this opinion that a lot of people have, I think, that, like, that you can't really do community online. You can't really do spiritual community online. And I, I have changed that opinion, but I think a lot of people still hold that, even though now, because of COVID, like, all the communities are online, right? But I think a lot of people still hold that opinion. And... I have had the experience where I join a group and they really just have where you are assigned a teacher and you just message your teacher back and forth. And that's the whole thing. That's all it is. And that's good. And that's fine. But that's not a community, really, right? And community, what we need is an opportunity to show up and in that sense, we get out of a community what we put into it, whether it is re uh, in person, I almost said real, whether it's in person or online, we're going to get out of it what we put into it. And it's really about having an opportunity to show up. I, um, when I first started practicing a long time ago, I thought I can get by without community. That's what I thought. I thought I don't really want to meet new people. I don't really want to go somewhere. I thought I really identified myself as an introvert and also as a non-joiner. So I really did not want to join a community. And I resisted that for years because I just thought that, that don't, that's awkward. And it is. It is awkward to go into a place by yourself and enter into really really anything, really. It doesn't have to be a spiritual community. It's also awkward to just go join a bowling league or something, right? Anything that you go and do by yourself is awkward. And in my life experience, I didn't have like a friend to go with. I didn't have people around me that were all that interested. So it, it took a lot of, I'm hesitant to use the word courage, but it took a lot of courage for me to ultimately go to a, go to a Buddhist temple. And I think a lot of people are faced with that. So I sometimes think about that. I think of how do I reach non-joiners? How do I reach people that are deep introverts? And I, I don't really have a good answer to that. But I do see people, when I talk to people about um, spirituality on Facebook, which I don't recommend doing, but when I do that, I do see people say that same thing that I thought. I see people say like, uh, we don't really need a community. And I, like I once saw somebody say, I want to use Buddhist teachings, but I don't want to make it a big part of my life. And, well, I thought, well, you're just a mindfulness practitioner then, and that's fine, but um, I do want to make Buddhist teachings a big part of my life. And so, for that reason, I think community is important. And some people have that argument, is Buddhism a religion, or is it something else? Is it like a philosophy? And I think that if you don't have a community, then maybe for you, Buddhism 
is just a philosophy and really any and that's not limited to buddhism either right there are people that just just study paganism or just study christianity or just study islam or whatever and just study it a lot and don't go anywhere and don't practice with other people and and for them i would say that's probably a philosophy too and that's fine philosophies are good but uh the teaching of the buddha is a list of things to do so it's bigger than a philosophy um i've actually heard people say like chanting's not a big part of buddhism and that just makes me think oh you learned this from reading and you've never met another buddhist because chanting's a really big part of buddhism almost everywhere um that that being said the amount of chance we do in this group i think is the right amount of chance because i have been to temples where like they have pages of chants that you do every time and that i'm not into that but um so yeah community is important um and i'm gonna read to you a passage a little very short quote from a book and this book is the 37 practices of a bodhisattva it's not a zen text and i'm sorry for that it is a tibetan mahayana text um tibetan buddhists some of them like to say they're not influenced by Zen, but in this case, this text is influenced by Zen. But um, this passage I'm going to read to you is about community, and it's this. With some friends, the three poisons keep growing. Study, reflection, and meditation weaken, while loving kindness and compassion fall away. Give up these friends. And then the verse after that is, with some friends, your shortcomings fade away and abilities grow like the waxing moon. Hold such friends dear to you, dearer than your own body. So that is, I wanted to read that and I wanted to express that another function of spiritual community, other than just an opportunity to show up, is it brings you into a situation where you meet other people that have the same goals as you. And the truth is, we don't like to think this way, but the truth is that we become more like the people we spend time with. We become more like the people we spend time with. Not that like you're a zombie and if you're around someone like they fill you like an empty vessel or something, but we just, we do. And uh, in my early 20s, I was a very negative person and I spent time with very negative people and we fed off each other sort of. And I'm, I'm very thankful. I met my wife at a Buddhist temple and we ended up, you know, moving in together and getting married and raising our kids together and all that stuff. And so because of that, even if I don't get as much time with a Buddhist community as, as I would like, well, I've got someone all the time who's interested in awakening just like I am. And that's, that's a very nice thing to have because I think that just being around people with the same goals as us is very helpful so i do think like i wonder i think we all wonder this sometimes how do people make friends as adults how do people make friends as adults right we made friends when we were kids and it was for the most part easy but as, as adults we don't it's it's more challenging but the hope is and this doesn't maybe this doesn't always work but the hope is that in your spiritual community you make friends and these friends are people with the same goals as you, which is good. And so that can be very important. I think that there's a sort of, I'm hesitant to use this term, but I think there's a sort of positive form of peer pressure in a spiritual community, a positive form of peer pressure. So if I'm doing meditation like by myself and like nobody's around, I can get real tempted to check my phone, right? Especially if I, no, there's no, there's no excuse, right? I can just get real tempted to check my phone. That's why like early in the morning is the best time for me to practice by myself because I know nothing's happening, right? Not that anything important is ever happening on my phone because it's not, but if I'm by myself and I fidget a whole bunch or I'm checking my phone or whatever, that's different than if I'm with a community. Like here, um, we did a meditation and we can all see each other. And I, I'm a heavy fidgeter, so I fidget a little bit when I'm sitting. But 
man, if I knew nobody could see me, I don't know how much I would fidget, but probably more. And, but also I'm not accountable to anyone if I skip my alone meditation, right? Whereas if I miss a community meeting, um, not that people care because I think they don't, but people can, I can tell myself that I'm worried people care. And that, that self-shame is, is very powerful. I can tell myself, oh no, what are they going to think? And they probably, they probably don't even think about it at all, but I can tell myself that and that's powerful. And I do want to say that I think we live in a culture where like people tend to think bigger is better, but I think for spiritual communities, I think small groups might be better. Like I know everyone that's watching me right now. I know who everyone that's watching me is. And that's, that's kind of cool to think about. Um, I went to a Tibetan Buddhist temple here in Kansas city. And it was at the time, the biggest Buddhist community in Kansas city. I don't know that it still is. Um, but at the time it was, and you would go there and there'd be like 60 people there. And it could very easily happen that people are going and you're going and you don't know each other and you don't even see each other because there are so many. And I think that's something we can think about too. I think small groups are better because we feel seen in small groups. So um, I guess that's what I wanted to say about community. I think it is very important. I think the Buddha put it in the three jewels, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. I think he put that there for a reason. It is important. And also, there have been hermit teachers in the Zen tradition, right? There have been people who practice just all on their own. And we look at their writings and we remember them and we, we revere them sometimes. And... I don't like to think that some people who are studying Buddhism might use that and think, oh, well, that person was a hermit teacher, so I am too. Um, what makes those figures in history important is that they're so rare. And the truth is community is a very helpful thing. And also someone could, someone could make the arguments, well, the Buddha attained enlightenment by himself. He just sat under a tree, and that's true, but before he sat under that tree, he practiced with a group of yoga students, and before that, another group of yoga students, and right before he sat under the tree, he practiced with a group of ascetics who were just, like, starving themselves, and then he did sit under a tree by himself, and he did uh, discover enlightenment, and then what did he do right after that? Right after that, he, first he thought, oh, I don't know if the world can really understand this teaching, but then he dropped that idea and he said, all right, I'm going to build a community. So while being alone is a part of the Buddha story, it's a very small part and everything around that was about having a community. So um, that's all I wanted to say for today. Thank you for listening to me.